The surveyor probe, Apollo 12 was landing near, was one of five such machines that had measured and mapped the moon's surface for NASA. 50 feet coming down. Watch for the dust. 40 coming down at 2. Looking good. Watch for that. Coming down at 2 feet. You got plenty of gas. Plenty of gas, dude. Hang in there. 30 seconds. 18 feet coming down at 2. He's got it made. Come on in there. 24 feet. Contact light. Roger. Copy contact. Pro. Yeah, pro. That's what I see sitting on the side of the crater. Little surveyor, huh? Little surveyor, yes, sir. <laughs> Does that look neat? Conrad and Bean left the lunar module intrepid twice during their 31 and a half hour stay, again to collect rock and soil samples and set up scientific equipment, including machines capable of measuring seismic activity. They also ventured twice as far from the LEM as Armstrong and Aldrin had and retrieved pieces of the surveyor craft. On November 21st, one week after liftoff, Intrepid docked with Richard Gordon in the command module Yankee Clipper. Intrepid was allowed to impact with the moon's surface. Its collision registered on the seismic instruments. Alan Shepard was originally slated to command Apollo 13. Shepard hadn't flown since 1961 when he became the first American in space. He had developed an inner ear disorder that had grounded him. Shepard fought back, endured complicated surgery to correct the problem, and was scheduled for Apollo 13 when NASA officials decided he needed more training. Jim Lovell would go in his place. Lovell jumped at the chance to return and actually land on the moon after his lunar orbit experience during Apollo 8. The circumstances seemed fitting. Lovell had become part of Apollo 8 by swapping places with Michael Collins, who had undergone surgery to remove a bone spur on his spine. Now he was changing places again. Lovell's crew included lunar module pilot Fred Hayes and command module pilot John Swigert. Swigert was another switch, a replacement for Thomas Ken Mattingly, who had been exposed to German measles. The random arrangements that determine most missions, in this case, place these three men on the most dangerous flight of Apollo. Clock start, right? Roger. That's the all in Roger. Okay, Fado has it look. Looks good here, flight. Good agreement. Okay, boost that he look. That's what he looks good, flight. Okay, Capcom, we go on the ground. Okay, we go at one, Capcom. Get really the flight. Roger. The final near-fatal substitution was a faulty liquid oxygen tank that had been originally scheduled to be placed aboard Apollo 10. No one knew it was a bomb waiting to go off. This is the crew of Apollo 13, we everybody there. Uh, nice evening, and uh, we're just about ready to close out our inspection of Aquarius and get back to a pleasant evening and Odyssey. Good night. Three days out, on April 13, 1970, following a transmission from the crew, a short circuit caused by a wrong voltage thermostat switch occurred. The oxygen tank exploded, tearing a hole in the service module. In the command module Odyssey, a warning light flashed on. Main bus B undervolt. When they appraised the situation, the three men concluded that two-thirds of their fuel was gone. They were 200,000 miles away from Earth and only one oxygen tank was keeping the remaining fuel cell and the astronauts alive. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Main B bus undervolt. Roger, main B undervolt. Stand by a 13, we're looking at it. Okay, uh, right now, uh, Houston, the uh, voltage is, uh, is looking good. Uh, we had a pretty large bang associated with the um, caution and warning there. And as I recall, main B was the one that uh, had an amp spike on it uh, once before. For perhaps no other time in the program, not even during Apollo 11, the world's attention became focused on the status of three astronauts. 
Here is a bulletin from ABC News. The Apollo 13 spacecraft has had a serious power supply malfunction that could cause the lunar landing mission to be terminated early. NASA worked unceasingly to bring the astronauts home. The crew moved to the lunar module Aquarius and shut down all equipment except life support and communications. Even this might not be sufficient because the LEM was designed for two men for 45 hours of